Welcome to On the Nose. I think the, I think you're gonna get pretty personal dump here, dump cast, as I called it in one of my earlier episodes. I just motorcycle just went by. As uh, as I've been recording these, and they've been taking shape, and I've been learning and being shaped by doing it, I. I'm coming to kind of realize that this is like a space. This is, yeah, it's a space that I can use to take up space. Basically, I can fill this space with me, and that's okay. I have a tendency to only use, like, my life experiences as a way to help people feel heard, to feel related to I don't really take up the space to say, share my life experiences. If I do spend a lot of time talking with somebody and I'm doing a lot of the talking, a lot of times it's more like abstract and not really directly related to me, not like in the, you know, the nuts and bolts of details of my life. Uh, I'll talk about random articles I read and like all these patterns that my brain sees and things and stuff, but I don't really talk about myself. And it's fascinating because over the years, people have generally thought that they knew me pretty well because I talk a lot and because I talk about things that make them feel seen and heard, they feel like we're actually close. Uh, They feel I am close to them. And so they assume that I feel the same way. But a lot of times I don't even really feel particularly bonded to people because I never put myself out there. I was never vulnerable and allowed them to do the same for me. Um, and I think a lot of people don't even realize that they should be doing that. And it's a really effective and very sneaky defense mechanism um, because it misled me as much as it has other people. Getting really tired of these loud-ass motorcycles going by. I... It annoys me in part because they use pipes that aren't even legal. They're louder than what's legally allowed, but they get away with it because it's a lifestyle and there's this whole bias around it since uh, people on these loud bikes are no longer, you know, the bad guys like they were back in the day. But on a sports bike, if you change out the pipe and it makes it louder, you're going to get a ticket, period. Because nobody likes the sports bikes. And it's irritating to me. To me, it's like, Enforce the law universally. Let's lower the noise population, population, pollution, lower the noise pollution. They don't need those loud pipes. And that whole loud pipe saves lives thing is nonsense because that's not how sound travels. Literally not how the physics work. You don't hear those pipes unless you're at really low speeds where the sound can actually travel to you. When you're going like faster and like at freeway speeds, you don't hear the pipes until the motorcycle's on you. And it's more likely to have a startle effect than an inform effect. So, yeah, it's they're just obnoxious. It's a weird ego thing. I, yeah, I don't like it. And that's coming from somebody who grew up on motorcycles, I love motorcycles. It's a way of life. I just think that there are certain things that have become normalized that I don't agree with. Anyway, as I was saying before, so I think, you know, when I started this, and I've talked about this before, that I wanted to talk about things. But I'm having a really hard time doing that. It's like I have things to talk about, but they're more personal. And for some reason, I feel like those don't count, that that's lower quality. I, you know, and it doesn't make sense to me when I really think about it in a removed way because like other people's stuff is interesting and other people's stuff is valid. So why wouldn't mine be? Like that's ultimately like I should be doing what feels natural and what feels right. And then the listener can decide if this is for them or not. And since I don't actually expect anyone to like what I'm doing, you know, that's not even like part of it. (laughs) It's just this, I just habitually always think of myself in a way that like makes myself like smaller in certain ways. And so that's just something that I need to work on. And I think that this, this podcast 
project is a good opportunity for that in a way that like I suspect that it will be like a phase where I'm going to talk about certain types of things and then eventually it's going to branch out and you know and yeah I don't know I don't know what's going on with my voice lately it's been doing this gravelly thing and it is driving me crazy because it's actually physically uncomfortable when it's doing it I don't have a runny nose I don't have post nasal drip so uh I'm not I'm not sure I'm kind of I'm kind of wondering if it's related to the, I have like neurological stuff with my esophagus where it doesn't quite fire right. So I'm wondering if my vocal cords are getting in on the action, but it, it is the current state that I am in, in my meat set. So I thought I would talk about, um, I guess like dating. I've never dated much, don't have a lot of experience. I had a lot of experience with getting involved with people and stuff when I was like younger in like my late teens and early 20s. And then I I stopped um, for a couple of years. I just rode my motorcycle, focused on my kid and was like, I don't want to be in a relationship. And then I got sucked into an abusive dynamic that I never wanted to be in in the first place. Like I said, no, and they wouldn't go away. And um, there was some other stuff to that, but yeah. And after that, you know, I was just, I was too messed up. Like I went from being this person that was like, like I would like jump on my friends and wrestle with them and give them hugs. And I was very comfortable with like physical contact as long as I knew the person. And after that, I couldn't, if somebody went to hug me, even if I knew them, I felt like I was going to throw up. I had a lot of trauma from that situation and I shut down, kind of went into hiding. I didn't want him like finding me online. So all my stuff was private. And, you know, I actually for several years, all of my my passwords were swearing at him just in case he hacked my stuff because he had a history of doing that. And I just made myself really, really small. And when I started making public accounts and making content on TikTok and being more public, it was so hard. It was so hard to be more out there. And it's gotten easier over the last like year and a half, but I still have these moments where I have like this hiccup of terror, you know, like, oh God, what am I doing? Um, but I don't know. I, I feel good about what I'm doing, even if I have that fear and it feels good for me. You know, maybe I'm not making the best content. I My shit's not edited and it's not all like streamlined and whatever. I don't have cool intro music and outro music, but you know, it feels good to do it. And even if I only have one listener, it's, that's, that's cool, man. Like, I don't know, just, just the act of, you know, would it be cool if more people listen to it and related and it helped relax them or give them something to think about? Absolutely. I'm not saying that I don't want like some kind of success. I'm just saying that like I can be happy with just a little. So I went on one, like just one date that was like a real just a date. It wasn't somebody I knew that I was hanging out with and we decided to get dinner. It wasn't like it was just a random person that I met and we liked the cut of each other's jib or gib or whatever that word is. And we just went out to dinner and hung out and it was fun. And um, I really had one of those in my entire life. And it didn't turn into anything. We talked on the phone before. We talked on the phone after for a while. But, like, he was looking for somebody more refined, more feminine, more ready to be a wife and a mom to his kids, which is unfortunately really common with men who have kids, is that's what they're looking for. Um, and I was looking to have a good time. I wanted to be a good parent to my kid, but I didn't want to give up being a person, you know? Um, so I, yeah, they're just, it was just a cool person to talk to. The coolest thing about him was he had a missile silo. 
that he was converting into a living space and recording space because he made industrial music, you know. Um, and I, I instigated, I walked up to him at an industrial club and was like, hey, I like your clothing, you know. And then he was like, said something nice to me. I don't remember what. I don't believe compliments, so they don't stay in there very well. And um, and then he offered to walk me and my friend to my car. And I was like, that's a little weird, but kind of cool because it's got, you know, it's got some interesting vibe going on. And he did end up being an interesting person. So, and then I went on a safe date with a friend who told me that I was not good enough at being a girl and he was going to teach me how to behave so that I could date successfully. And if that sounds condescending to you, it is. Um, he is not the only man who came into my life who told me I did not behave appropriately for a female. And I got to tell you, the rules for behaving appropriately for a female that they were putting on me are just silly. It was stuff like um, making sure that you let the man open the door for you. If I get to the door first, I'm opening the door. Y you want to open the door for me? You got to race me. You know, like, if you get the first, I'll let you open the door. I won't even think twice about it. I'll just be like, thanks, bro. Um, and, you know, like, stuff like sitting in the car while they walk all the way around the car to open the door. And I got I get two things to say about that. You better have a really nice ass and you better walk in front of the car. Otherwise, I'm not going to do that. It's it's not going to happen. So I just, yeah, I don't know. It, you know, like when we went out, we went out to dinner. I don't really remember where we went. It wasn't my kind of food. It was very like European. And yes, I like spice. Okay. And uh, he ordered for me, which made me uncomfortable because I have particulars, because I have food allergies. And then he made fun of me by saying that, he didn't need any special treatment or something with his order. And that was quite offensive. So, you know, I went out on this fake date with a friend. And then in retrospect, many years later, I realized that he probably likes me. And this was like his way of, because I was never very approachable. Um, that's part of the reason why I think I didn't get a lot of compliments and stuff, except from like really old guys, like grandpa's. Um, it's because I'm not particularly approachable in that way. I don't put out a, a, you know, sex me up and talk me into it vibe like at all. As a matter of fact, that wouldn't, that wouldn't work. I'm just not wired that way. But, um, I, I have like a history of not great luck in who I'm attracted to. I because I'm demisexual, I'm not attracted to people without like a mental connection to them. So like just having like really deep conversations is kind of what sort of unlocks someone's beauty to me. And um, even at a young age when I would have crushes on people, I didn't like daydream about being with them or I just liked them. And my crushes were like an expression of my enjoyment and my joy in knowing them. And I didn't necessarily need more from them than what I was already getting. But um, on the few occasions that people found out that I had crushes on them, they were offended by it. And they were mean to me. It wasn't just like, oh, I'm not interested. And I would have been like, that's okay. I, I'm not sure that I am either. I just enjoy you. But I never got a chance to say that. It would be, you know, treated like I was disgusting and that it was like so offensive to them that I thought that they were attractive and just, you know, like one, well, okay, there was a guy who I liked a lot and I did want more from him, but like we talked for like a year. I had a lot of time to, to develop my feels, you know, and he, um, it ends up that he was leading me on. And why was he doing this? He was doing this because his cousin, who I had been friends with, had told me that he liked me. And I said I only wanted to be friends with him. 
which I meant, and I continued to be friends with him and we continued to hang out because I only said that to people when I meant it. And um, apparently I broke his heart or some shit, which he never said to me. And I don't, I don't know. I never got that vibe off him, but who knows? And um, this was during a period where I was called cold hearted, like ice queen, like all of this stuff, because when I, I would just tell people no. Like, they would be like, I'm interested in you, you know, you want to be my girlfriend. And it was like, like 15, 16, like at this age. And I, I f- did not feel like people should be in relationships at that age because they're just going to end. They don't last. Um, but like, uh, he, he led me on to get revenge for his cousin. He didn't even tell his cousin what he was doing. It was something he decided to do. So once he decided that I liked him enough, he tore me down big time. He took everything I had shared with him, and I had shared a lot of stuff with him that I did not normally share with people, and he tore me down. And it fucked me up, like, a lot. Um, I After that, my, my crushes kind of became secrets because I just didn't, you know. And um, I had a crush at some point after that that was a secret, but somebody noticed it in my behavior and went and told the person, even though I had explicitly been like, please do not tell him. And then there was a birthday party that we all went to and he showed up with this girl in tow and um, had basically told her to scare me off of him. And she was in my face, like calling me ugly and all the shit. And it was like, just annoying and stupid because I never wanted more from him. We were not compatible. I just really thought he was cool. You know, like he just, he was good at music and, and soft-spoken and intelligent. And I just, I just thought he was cool. That's all. And yeah, like, and I had a boyfriend in junior high and I really liked him. Like, I like, I like, like liked him a lot and he seemed to like me a lot and the entire he was a popular kid I was not even close even the nerds were scared of me like (laughs) I I did not really have friends and um so it was a very weird match in terms of like social whatever whatever man but um I got picked on. His friends would corner me like they were in band class and um, the girls would corner me in the bathroom and tell me how ugly I was and how he was using me and just like constantly just harassment all the time. And so I broke up with them because I couldn't deal. And I was looking at the situation and being like, you know, if we stayed together, he's going to find out about my family, which I didn't. I was I had so much shame around my home life that I didn't want anyone to know. He came from like money, his family, they live in a nice house. His parents were educated. It's just assumed that they're going to be educated. And I was looking at nothing, no future like that at all. Like I, you know, just going to figure out what I'm going to do to earn a living. And um, so I just, I saw the end in the beginning and I ended it. And then he hated me, which sucked, but I understand and I totally understood it. We, you know, we went to school for a couple of years after that. And I was friendly with a girlfriend he had uh, for a couple of years after. And like, just, yeah, that's probably like one of the ones that like, like early life, like maybe I could have dealt with it differently, but I don't really know. You know, I, I did what felt safe, I think. Um, you know, I had a couple other boyfriends, but like, they're always like like running into people, becoming friends, and then building a connection, and that turns into something. It's never like dating. Like I don't understand dating. Like how how do you even know if you like somebody? Like do you have to like screw them, and then decide that you like the way that their sweat smells or something? Like I just don't understand because like to me attraction is built on the foundation of knowing somebody. You know, and I do very much look at like relationships, like kind of like houses where you need to have a foundation. You know, you need to like prep the ground before you put the foundation in. 
And then, you know, you need to build good bones into it. And that all comes from like communication, being honest and really getting to know each other. Like I, I don't understand people who are dating for a couple of months and they tell each other they love each other. On what basis do they love each other? Because love comes from trusting. Like if you can't be like truly like intimate and vulnerable with somebody, how, how can you actually love them? Like, is that love to me? It doesn't seem like it is. It would maybe be like a form of need. Like, I think maybe people are confusing different emotions for love, but I mean, like what, what good examples do we have in media? We don't like grow up with, with really any, you know? And I know, like, I'm probably overthinking it because that's what I do. But I feel like I get, like, better quality stuff because I overthink things. It hasn't worked out in the love department yet. But, you know, it might. I probably, like... I've always just figured that I won't experience being in love with somebody until, like, I have, like, a terminal illness or something. It'll just, like, that's how my life has always worked. And so, like, that'll probably be how it works for me. But it's not something I actively look for. Like if I'm going to have somebody come into my life and they're going to fit in my life and they're going to take up space and take up my energy, then I want it to be natural. And I want it to like, you know, uh, be like a good kind of work. I'm not going to say easy, but like a good kind of work where I don't feel like I'm giving up myself for them. And all of my relationships, um, with the exception, I had... So I had one relationship when I was like 15, 16 with somebody that was a little older than me, like legally too, too older. But like um, we had a good connection and it wasn't creepy or pervy or anything like that. Um, he's like a very good person. We're still in contact with each other. And yeah, so um, we we knew that he was leaving for college when we got together. And so it didn't feel like a relationship. And in any sort of traditional sense, because he knew it was going to end. So it was just very, like, fun and and stuff. And there was some drama at certain points. But, um, you know, like I like I did tell did tell him that I loved him, which I, I haven't really done that. And he told me that I didn't. And it made me really hurt and angry because that's not something I would ever say to somebody lightly. And I didn't mean it as in like having an expectation of longevity. It was just that he was important to me. And I had that, that was the word, you know, like I trusted him and he was, he saw, he saw my home life a little bit and he's one of the only people that ever stood up for me um, and talked back to my parents and you know, that that went pretty far. That went pretty far. So, so I, you know, I had an involvement with somebody that was kind of like a best friend, but he wasn't emotionally available. So that it just was what it was until he moved away. That was like later. And I'm very like accepting of things just being what they are. Like, I don't, I don't think about relationships as being a forever thing. I think that like as long as they serve their purpose and both people are benefiting in mutual ways, then however long it lasts is however long it lasts. People who can build a relationship that lasts for decades and they they have a contentment and they have grown as people while doing that, that's amazing and and cool. But like a relationship that lasts two months where both people also grow from it and then they move on better people from it, that's all. That's just as legitimately cool in my mind. Um, so that that happened after my after the abusive situation, and I was I didn't understand how messed up I was yet. So when when that one ended, I um, basically was like, nope, I am done. I'm just gonna be by myself for a while because that whole situation just made me aware that I needed. I needed to heal and that accidentally turned into 15 years of being alone. And so I went from like having a fair amount of relationships. Most of them are pretty short, like six to 12 months. And then I had um, the relationship where I had my son was like three years. And then 
the one after that was three years. And then it was, you know, like not. And then um, not means I was single for several years and there was the abuser and then and then nothing. Um, so I was alone 15 years and I didn't mean to do that. I remember when I got close to 10 years, I was like, you know, it's kind of cool that I'm going on 10 years. I'm kind of proud of that. But I mean, I don't know why, but I, I was maybe just because it's a big number. But um, but then I was like, you know, I should probably do something about my isolation. But I, w I was in this job that was just super toxic. There was no time for me to do anything. As a matter of fact, the only way that I got to go home at a reasonable hour is because I got a dog. Me having a kid did not matter to them. Like that was not a good excuse, but me having a dog was a good excuse. Um, but I would still have to go home and work. I just, you know, would drive home, walk the dog, get back online. So there, there was like no, there was dating wasn't, and I don't know how to date. And that's, you know, like, how do you, how do you do that when you don't know how to do that? How do, you know, like if I, did, I didn't have any people in my life to like connect with, so like, how am I going to find somebody? And like a dating profile is like, no, 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 no. It's so if I couldn't get up to socialize, I wasn't going to meet people. So then it, you know, I was like, okay, 2012 came around and I was like, I'm going to get out and start socializing. I'm going to try going to concerts. I'm going to try, I'm just going to force work to let me have time to do these things where I could like start to meet people and make friends because I was living in the Bay Area. I had moved away from my friends and I hadn't made any new friends, even though it had been several years. And um, instead, I got sick, like really, really sick, where I became disabled and sick, as I've talked about before. And that kind of got in the way. And then you know, I started feeling worthless and like I wasn't deserving of anyone's affection. Like anybody that was going to put up with me, it was probably going to be mean to me. And so then I just kind of gave up and was like, you know, I just don't, I don't get to have that because I'm too fucked up. And then I met somebody and um, didn't like him right away. It took a couple of months. And then, and then it was like something clicked. And then I was like, oh, I kind of like this person. And we started like interacting with each other like we liked each other. He was making me laugh and we were like flirting and joking around and making like dirty jokes and, and like um, talking about stuff, like, like daydreaming about doing projects together. Like he had some like project cars and I was like, well, I could take pictures and do the the filming for YouTube while you work on them and you know like things that like to me like the idea of like having projects that I get to do with people like oh my god like that's like exciting that that could be like foreplay in and of itself if I was you know involved with somebody and we were like doing stuff together um so like that I love that that just like and anyway so like that whole thing went on and we like hung out but nothing really came of it because he wasn't really like available he was really busy with work and um he said he had like anxiety and I don't know why my voice cracked right there but it did anxiety unacceptable anyway so I kind of like it cooled down after a while because I went yeah I'm not going to get what I need from this person and this was like I don't know, 2017 and by 2018 I was like okay I'm like done with this person but like after so we started talking in like May and then by December he had started being kind of a dick like where he would like make rude jokes or just like accuse me of stuff and then be like ho ho I'm just kidding and I was like oh that's like red flag gas gas lighting shit there so then I was like okay I guess I'm gonna move on and then he just became somebody that I texted with but I like stopped flirting and and stuff um and then I found out like a year after that that he was married and had a um, a newborn child during the time when we, were, we would be texting from like six in the morning to two in the morning. So he was neglecting his w wife and brand new baby. Um, and he lied about like his name. He lied about where he 
he lived, he lied about his job and his his level of success and just yeah. And that that was like my last crunch and I I just kind of I'm not I'm not like, you know, well, okay, it's not my, it was not my last crush. It's my last crush on a guy because my crushes on females never have as much toxicity. They do often involve ghosting, but they do not involve this kind of shit, you know? Um, like they don't attack me or whatever. But um, that was like a whole, that was a thing. That was like finding out that I had been lied to in that way where I had shared myself with somebody and made myself vulnerable after years of being closed off, like triggered my PTSD so bad, like just so bad. And, um, you know, I ended up getting involved in a relationship after that with somebody, but it wasn't somebody that I had established like a crush. I didn't have like, you know, we, we were friends and he was safe and, um, easy to get along with and and stuff like that so it was it was different there wasn't that like um that kind of like excitement or whatever and it, I don't think it was there for him either because just based on behavior and the fact that he was like dating other people and stuff like if if there had been that level of excitement he would not he would have been focused on me so but like you know my takeaway from that is that I'm not going to be settling. I told myself that a long time ago, but I need to like be good about that because no matter how good a person is, um, if if the if there isn't like some fire there, then you know it's not it's not going to be fun. And I think like you know you could get in a relationship without the fire, and it can be safe, and that's cool. But I want some fun, you know. I don't even care about longevity. I just want I just want to have some fun. And I want to have some like flirting and some dancing and fart jokes and I don't know, like just fun. Otherwise, I am perfectly content to just do my own thing, entertain myself, talk to my friends. I don't, you know, I don't need I don't need that. So it has to be what I want or or not, you know? And my concern is that because I've had such bad, bad, not luck, bad taste, bad choice making, that I'm just going to keep having problems. Like, how do you, how do you, if people lie, if they lie by putting their best foot forward, if they lie about who they are because of reasons, how how are you supposed to know that without taking the time to get to know them and investing and becoming vulnerable while you're doing that? You know, because it, it takes time a lot of times for people to start slipping up and showing their, their real self. Um, and how do people navigate that without like being like a hot mess all the time? Because that, that stresses me out. Like, I don't lie. And this is like something that people have said about me to me and to other people about me is that when they meet me online and then meet me in the per in, in the person in person, I am the same person. Like there's no, you know, and I tell people straight up about my quirks and like, you know, things that I prefer and need and things that are actually often associated with autism that I was already, I was already telling people how to accommodate me well before I knew that I was autistic, which is funny. And, you know, I, I just let people know, like, straight up. And so, you know, there's never any, like, surprises. So, like, there's, there's two, there's two, two things for that. One, why, are people mad at me for being the way that I said that I was? Like, were they not listening? You know, that happens a lot. And then, um, and people, I, I mean, men, because this never happens with any woman I've had in my life. And then um, just how come other people can't do that? Like this whole concept of trying to impress people so they'll like you is weird to me 
unless you're going to try to impress them with who you really are, all you're doing is setting both you and the other person up for some kind of like failure because their expectations and what they know about you are based on what you say and what you show them. And if, if you're not being consistent to who you really are, at some point in time, when you slip up and start being yourself, they're going to be like, wait a minute. Why are you this way now? Like, like, um, I briefly like went out with this guy and when we first met, like he was like clean shaven and his car was clean. Three months later, he was like very scruffy, which I, I don't care about that. But, um, but his car was full of trash, like trash to the level of the seat. So when you sat down on the car, your knees were like in your face because your feet were at the level of your ass. Um, and the smell was something else. And, and the thing was, is like everybody told me after this, oh yeah, that's just how he was. He cleaned up when he met you to impress you. And I was like, what? Like, what? What? I don't understand. Like, I was very, that was my first time experiencing that. And it was, it blew my mind. Like, don't dress in ways you wouldn't normally dress. If you're going to dress up, dress up in the ways that you would normally dress up. You know, if if you don't normally like shave and you know that you're not going to normally shave and that you don't want to upkeep that kind of shaving, don't, don't shave. Be yourself. Let that person connect with who you really are. And then if on occasion you're like, you know what, I want to shave. You know what, I want to dress up and, and do these other things things that you don't normally do and would not want to expend the energy to maintain, then those are just special little blips that the person isn't expecting to be you all the time. I know, I know, I know, like the world doesn't work and run on honesty, but I think it should. And I'm going to keep saying that because I, I think that it's worth being brave and being honest because there's so much less drama. I mean, without lying, we'd have a lot less TV shows on Netflix, that's for sure, especially American TV shows. Um, just, it, we just don't need it, you know? So if you have the, like, if, you, if you're prone to that, if you, if you don't feel good enough about yourself to be yourself, and you're in a situation where you can put that quote unquote, best foot forward, AKA the person that you actually aren't, or you can be yourself, try practicing just being yourself. You know, anybody that's worth keeping in your life is not going to judge you or reject you for being yourself. And, you know, it's, it's not just about like the benefit to the other person. It's about the benefit to yourself because you should have people in your life that, that appreciate you, you know, like, like we all deserve that. And, you can't really know for sure if somebody appreciates you or respects you or whatever, or is going to stick around even, uh, if you're not being honest. There will always be that doubt. You know, it's like an analogy that I can think of is when I take photos uh, to put online, uh, either on Instagram or OnlyFans, and like I get compliments. Sometimes I'm like, well... It's really just the angle, you know? And I think about sometimes just taking like really plain, non-stylized photos um, to mix in there. Because then that way when I get a compliment, I know that I can trust it because if they're still complimenting like the plain stuff that I don't feel like is as flattering, then, you know, it's, it's, um, it'll just be easier for me to trust it. Um, yeah. So that's my thought. I didn't, I don't know how I got on that topic, but that's where, that's where I ended up. <laughs> and I think that that is going to be about it. I wanted to say, check out my, uh, I'm going to call it my cousin podcast uh, by Tyler Holmes uh, called Two Crows Podcast. Uh, it is a three segment per week 
podcast. I'm saying that word a lot. Sorry. And the Wednesday segment uh, includes me. I'm on it. And the other two segments are equally as enjoyable with like stories of like funny stuff in the news and and uh, just personal reflection and, and stuff like that. So definitely check it out. I will be putting a link in the description so you can check it out. And also thank you to my patrons. I still haven't decided if I should be thanking people by name, but um, you guys know who you are and you guys freaking rock. I have been going through some shit lately and it just... It, it really, really helps just having that support there for for the money. Absolutely. But also just like knowing the people like are invested in my well-being enough to like just be there. You know, it's awesome. So thank you. And um, I need a cool sign off. I don't like I don't know if you guys have any recommendations for something cool I can say. Um, otherwise, I'm I'm just going to be done. OK, bye.